Those who have faith will make merit, keep sila, morality, and bhavana, cultivate the mind. They will build goodness. Wherever they live, they will have determination to do this. But for people who may have wealth and money, and have the time to do it, yet if they have no faith, they won't do any of it. They won't practice goodness. So this faith is important to bring our spiritual hearts to go build goodness, to do dana, generosity, keep sila, and bhavana. We will have self-sacrifice for the benefit of others. We will have goodness in body and in the mind. We take the body to do goodness as well, so we are not deformed or handicapped in this way. But there are some people we see in the world who have strong and complete bodies, but don't have diligence and striving. They don't want to take up work, don't try to study, and may ask support from others continually. So like this, being lazy in doing work, they don't succeed in their life. At a young age, they don't study. Then growing up, they don't work. Then even being a child of a millionaire or billionaire, but the money the parents give them is all gone. Ultimately, they just wander about aimlessly. They are someone without a refuge. They have no house or place to stay, have no food, clothing and medicines. Why? Because of being lazy in doing work and having no wisdom. They don't see the dangers of our mind which is chaotic and not peaceful. The dangers in the mind that wants to take advantage of others. So the mind that doesn't want to take up work has failure like this. And they won't be someone who self-sacrifices for the benefit of others. So this is not someone who has wisdom. Like the rich merchant Anatta Pindika, who was someone who had a lot of wealth, but he made a lot of merit. He made merit fully in his heart. He couldn't not do it. So he made merit, and it gave him delight, and be like a dewa, a divine being. He saw the benefits in merit. He did it, and felt delighted, and inwardly happy. And then a dewa came and said, Don't do too much, your wealth is about to finish. He replied, Dewa, don't damage my faith, go somewhere else. The Dewa was troubled by this and couldn't stay in his house anymore. It had to go wander elsewhere. There was no dwelling place for the Dewa. So this was the power of merit of the merchant Nata Pindika. Until that Dewa went to the Buddha and the Buddha said that it needed to ask forgiveness from Nata Pindika and needed to make his wealth return to abundance. So the Dewa used its power to turn the fields of Anatta Pindika to gold. Then he became more wealthy than in the past. Like we may have heard of in the present day in India, where a huge vast gold mine was discovered. It's like this. So in regards to merit, it can arise. And it would be even easier for it to arise in our Buddha's time. So here, even though... At the time, Anatta Pindika didn't have wealth anymore, but he was not handicapped in the heart. His heart did it fully and made merit to the fullest. But some people have good bodies yet don't self-sacrifice, while there are some who are handicapped or lacking in competence, but we shouldn't call them disabled. They are just ones who can't help themselves a little. They can help themselves to some extent, but not as much as an ordinary person. For example, a person with a leg that has been damaged, and they need to use a cane to walk. But this person went to a public area and entered a lift. The lift can hold 10 people, but the maxed weight capacity of the lift was exceeded. The people in the lift looked around at each other to see who would go out. They thought, I am in a rush. I need to work. I need to go first. It's a competition. I can't be slowed down. I won't give in to anyone. I came here first. You came later, so you should go out. I've been in here longer, so I don't need to go out. So they are upeka, equanimous, 
But this equanimity here is the type that is from a sense of self. It has me and them. So it isn't the equanimity that comes from samadhi, concentration, and entering jhana, absorption. But there are those who can't be equanimous. They can't enter jhana. But they have a mind that is higher than normal people, higher than humans. She had a foot with difficulty in walking and needed to use a cane. But she left that lift. She got out of that lift. She self-sacrificed. The people who are good, the people with good legs, wouldn't self-sacrifice. She saw that she should make merit at this time. She saw the drawbacks that, I have problems with my walking, so it's better for me to build barami, spiritual accumulations, so that I won't have to suffer more like this in the future. So may I self-sacrifice. She walked and left that lift. She let the people with good legs walk the path first. They are in a rush to go, so let them go first. She was determined to follow her aspiration, and she felt inner happiness and joy, because she had built goodness. She had seen the drawbacks of her current situation. So can we see that even though she was handicapped in the body, but her mind had seen the drawbacks of her situation and saw the benefits of self-sacrifice. So she left the lift. But the ones in the lift who could walk easily and conveniently got carried away. They didn't see the drawbacks of their situation. But if they felt deeply about what was happening, even just a little, then, oh, the person with a bad leg sacrificed for me to go first. Would there be even just one person who would quickly extend out his hand and say, don't go out, you go down first. You walk slowly, so I will make the sacrifice and leave the lift. But there wasn't anyone. So this is being handicapped in the heart. The body is strong, but the heart is handicapped. It is not thinking of building goodness. So can you see the ones who are handicapped in the body, but not handicapped in the heart? These days, there are a lot of people who are handicapped in the body, but their hearts are good. But in the present day society, there are a lot of people who are handicapped in the heart. They are people who are selfish, thinking only of themselves. So Venerable Ajahn Chah said, We are able to see those who physically die. Everyone can see the people who have died. But there are a lot of people who are as if dead or those who are sick, in pain, those who are handicapped in the heart, but who are still walking around here and there. They are all handicapped. They are handicapped in not building goodness. Not seeing goodness, they don't do it. They are too careless. Like the ones in the lift, there were a lot of people who were too careless. They think that, there is nothing wrong with me now. I'm not sick. I'm not yet in pain. I haven't yet died. So I'm not interested in others. I am only interested in myself. This is being handicapped in the heart. But those who are handicapped in their body, they will try to improve their minds. They won't be careless. They are determined to build virtue and goodness. And there were stories of this from the Buddha's male and female lay disciples in the time of the Buddha. Among the female lay disciples, there was a woman who had a hunchback. She was one who would go buy flowers and bring them to the palace for Queen Samawadi. But she listened to the Dhamma of the Buddha and attained to Sotapanna stream entry. And after that, she was not handicapped in the heart anymore. In the beginning, she was handicapped both in the body and in the heart because she did some fraud. She would receive the money to buy flowers, say 1,000 baht, and she would go buy about 600 baht. She would do this regularly, and so Queen Samawadi wasn't aware of this. But later, after listening to Dhamma, she did not lie anymore and would not steal anymore. Her karma she had done already, where her back was crooked already, 
but this life she would not let the heart be crooked any more. She became a sodapana already, so her heart was not crooked any more. Her heart had great strength and great purity. So she bought flowers with all the 1,000 baht. There were a lot of flowers, and Queen Samawadi, who was the queen of King Udena, was surprised why there were so many flowers. So she asked about it to Lady Kujutara, who answered that she had listened to the Dhamma of the Buddha, and so she did not lie any more. She would not commit fraud and would not steal any more. She wouldn't steal the wealth of others to be hers any more. She had understood the Dhamma. Here Queen Samawadi wanted to listen to the Dhamma, so she arranged for Lady Kudrutara to be bathed and clothed well, set out flowers and fragrances, and sat her in a high seat to teach the Dhamma that the Buddha gave that made her attain to the Dhamma. And so when she gave the Dhamma talk, what was the outcome? Lady Kujutara taught the Dhamma, and Queen Samawadi and her five hundred attendants all attained to Sodopana. Here we can see that though Lady Kujutara had been handicapped in the body and handicapped in the heart, but later, after changing, she was not handicapped anymore. So there are many people in the world who are handicapped in the heart because of being careless and heedless. So today, we have come, and we should contemplate this. When we see people in suffering, people in trouble, people who are lacking in opportunities, if we are able to help them, then we try to help according to our ability. It doesn't need to be more than that. We can also give advice, or help to explain the path for them. We can help in terms of wealth, the amount which isn't a burden for us. 10, 20 baht, 50 baht, and we may get some happiness coming up from this giving. Like for us, we want to build Barami, but we may live in a place of rich people, and so we don't know how to help them. Each person has food, has money, has a house, and medicines already. But when we see someone who is poor, lacking, and in difficulties, then it's a good chance for us to build Barami. Sometimes we may travel by car and there is someone knocking on our window and we think that it's our luck that today there is someone asking of us and so we can give according to our ability, give 5 baht, 10 baht. What we can give, we give. It doesn't need to be a lot and our mind is delighted. But there is no need to think past this as it can make our mind troubled like thinking, what will they do with the money? Are they being truthful? This is anxiety, and the mind isn't pure. Before we give dana and make merit, our mind is cheerful, and while we're giving as well. And after giving, it makes us delighted because we have sacrificed today. This makes our mind joyous in helping those who are poor and who don't have so this is about merit. May we accumulate merit. The merit that we accumulate will bring us happiness in this life and the next life. They are also supplies for us on the long journey onwards. So may we build and accumulate merit. May we contemplate these teachings. Don't be handicapped in the heart. We have a strong and complete body already. So may we strive to build goodness. Don't harm the life of living beings. Don't shorten the life of others. Otherwise, they will come back to shorten our life and harm our life. Then we may be someone whose body is handicapped. Like this one disciple of mine. As a child, he kept breaking the legs of crabs. His mum said, Be careful, they may come back to break your arms and legs. And later, when he was older, he worked in Japan. He was walking past a sewing machine. It happened that the machine caught and pulled onto his shirt, and his arm was all messed up. He knew he wouldn't die, but that his arm had to be torn. 
This was because the karma was giving its results. So this is an example. So don't harm the life of small and big creatures. It's good if we can do this. There should be no need to mention about large animals, as we don't harm them anymore. Cows, buffalo, like this, we don't harm them. If others do it, that's up to them. But we have no delight or satisfaction in that. But we may make use of them in order to support our life. So we look at it in this way. So may you strive to build and accumulate goodness. This is practicing in homage to the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, like we have on the Maga Puja day that has passed. May you all have happiness and prosperity. <laughs>